Majority Leader. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. But allow me, Honorable Speaker, as I congratulate the Honorable Babu for the, for the good uh, performance, to also correct him that what he was describing is called bottom-up economic model, not trickle-down. I know he, uh, he may have a problem with uh, bottom-up, and I also want to encourage the Honorable Babu that indeed now is when you are doing what you ought to be doing, speaking to issues economics and not in any way, and we should not allow any leader in this country in any way to sabotage that economic recovery uh, uh, trajectory that we have begun this year. And therefore, I encourage the Honorable Babu Awino to join the rest of the country as eloquently as he has submitted on the bottom-up economic model to eloquently do the same out there, not just in the house. Also, as you speak in rallies, uh, let us speak towards economic recovery. Honorable Speaker, I also rise to support this motion and indeed take this opportunity to thank the Budget and Appropriations Committee and by extension, the Debt Committee for the splendid job that they have done over a very short time. And Honorable Speaker, these supplementary estimates come at a very good time for the country and for us as members of parliament because we are elected into this assembly, Honorable Speaker, as a 13th parliament to resolve issues that are of concern to the Kenyan people. And there is no greater issue of concern to the people of this country today and indeed globally, the world over, other than the rising cost of living. And this rising cost of living, Honorable Speaker, in this country is aggravated by the uh, drought situation. And we have been told by uh, many players, Honorable Speaker, that this is the worst drought that this country has had in the last 40 years. And therefore tells you that the challenges that are ahead of us, Honorable Speaker, are quite enormous. And as has been mentioned by, I think, the leader of minority and the chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, the rising uh, in global inflation uh, as a result not just of the uh, global warming but also the Russian Ukraine conflict that has disrupted supply chains around the world supply chains of uh, manufactured items supply chain of food items including our own supply chains to wheat and other food items this honorable speaker has left us under very strenuous situation as a country and we have a huge responsibility as leaders to work together and team up together to work towards alleviating the problems that face our people. And this house being the budget-making house, I want to implore on all members of this house, Honorable Speaker, to rise to the occasion and work together and act together to ensure that we have in place policies that will not be short-term, but sustainable policies and not one of very costly and mega budgetary expenditures as we witnessed in the dying moments of the last regime, Honorable Speaker. It is indeed true what the Honorable Pio and I have said that was blatant abuse of Article 223 of the Constitution. And that, Honorable Speaker, part of it came under the pretext of dealing with the high cost of living. And what did we do? We embarked on subsidies fuel subsidies that were costing this country the level of 60 to 70 billion shillings a month. Food subsidies, consumer subsidies. And in this budget, Honorable Speaker, let me draw your attention to the report, Honorable Speaker. Because if you, if you read through the report on page 5, on the expenditures under Article 223, the Budget and Appropriations Committee has enumerated 120 billion shillings spent under Article 223 of the Constitution and as outlined in the third schedule has allowed these expenditures to be approved by this House. Part 2 of, of that report, Honorable Speaker, speaks to some 10.091 billion shillings also spent under Article 223 of the Constitution. Outlined in the fourth schedule, which the Budget and Appropriations Committee has recommended to this House to reject. And I want to agree with the Budget and Appropriations Committee that indeed not everything that is paid under Article 223 is bad. 
and the law is clear on what ought to be paid under Article 223 and not what cannot be paid under Article 223 of the Constitution. Part of what the Budget and Appropriations Committee is recommending for disapproval, Honorable Speaker, are payments that related to some 4 billion shillings that you find in the books that related to the maize subsidy program where UNGA was to be subsidized and supplied to Kenyans at a cost of 100 shillings. And the majority of Kenyans will tell you they never saw that UNGA in their shops or in the kiosks in their neighborhoods. Honorable Speaker, Kenyans did not only fail to find the UNGA, but millers were never paid. Today, millers still pursue payments from government for this UNGA subsidy program that monies were appropriated and spent, and you wonder who were paid, Honorable Speaker. The 60 billion shilling fuel subsidy was tipped in very high level corruption, Honorable Speaker. And that is why I want to support the leader of minority that the relevant House committees, and I can see the Honorable John Buddy, the chairman of PAC, the Public Accounts Committee, looking at me. And I saw how keenly he listened to his leader of minority. You have a huge responsibility to ensure, because the Budget and Appropriations Committee again has recommended on page four that the Office of Editor General undertakes an audit of expenditures granted under Article 223 of the Constitution for the financial year 2022-2023 and reports to the National Assembly by 30th of June 2023. Indeed, it is not just the Public Accounts Committee, even the relevant departmental committees yes. must get to the bottom of some of the, these issues. Yes. What happened to the fuel subsidy money? What happened to the maize subsidy money? What happened to the payment that you have seen 6.1 billion shillings? Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the Honorable KJ, he will have his say. And uh, I want to continuously the encourage the member for Dagoretti to desist from shouting. <laughs> because this is a house of honor and decorum. I got the impression he was cheering you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between cheering and shouting, Honorable Speaker. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I was speaking about the 6.1. I know he knows what I'm speaking about. Because the payment to Helios on the apparent acquisition of the shareholding of Telcom Kenya, Honorable Speaker, the Honorable KJ here will tell you, as chair of the uh, committee on ICT, it is not clear up to now the legal status of the ownership of Telcom Kenya. Yet the government of Kenya spent a whooping 6.1 billion shillings to acquire shares in Telcom Kenya. I have no problem, uh, Honorable Speaker, and I have indicated this afternoon to Honorable John Buddy, I will be appearing before his committee with evidence of how the 6.1 billion shillings paid out on, on account of acquisition of Telcom Kenya ended up in accounts in Malaysia ended up getting back to accounts of individuals in this country and ended up to accounts in the Cayman Islands, Honorable Speaker. Blatant looting of public resources on the verge of an election. What will shock the country today, Honorable Speaker, is that the payment was processed two days after the elections of the 8th of August, when the rest of the country were counting votes. There are people in the former regime who are counting billions, hitting their accounts here and in the Cayman Islands, Honorable Speaker. And those things must come to light. Because the same characters today, Honorable Speaker, are the same people who pretend to be speaking about the high cost of living. Yet yesterday, you are looting this country dry. And today, you are out there inciting Kenyans, telling Kenyans the cost of living has gone up. It is you who took the cost of living high. It is your blood and looting of our country that has driven our economy to where it is. And we must speak about these things without fear, without favor. We told them then, and we will continue to tell them even today, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, the leader of minority pointed out to issues under 223 that have also been paid by this nascent regime, as he called it. This regime has indeed made payments out of the 120 billion shillings under Article 223. 
But look at what has been paid. It is 6 billion shillings. I heard the leader of minority say he has not seen the recruitment of teachers. You are aware over 3,000 teachers have been recruited. 30,000, sorry. The highest number of teachers to be recruited at a go in the history of pre- and post-independence Kenya have been recruited under the Kenya Kwanza administration, Honorable Speaker. The 30,000 teachers, those who were there before, instead of allocating 6 billion shillings to recruit teachers, yet they were the initiators of the junior secondary and CBC program. They never saw reason and sense to allocate resources to uh, recruit teachers and provide capitation for junior secondary. In this supplementary budget order of members, 6 billion shillings goes towards recruitment of 30,000 teachers to ensure our junior secondary students and CBC program kicks off adequately. 9 billion shillings in this budget is going towards capitation of our junior secondary. 2.9 billion in this budget is going to a nation about speaker that bedeviled members of parliament under their CDF kitties. Areas under CDF that after the passage of this supplementary budget, you will have 2.9 billion shillings that will clear all the areas that have bedeviled constituencies that have had areas up to and including the year 2022-2023. And therefore, I want to ask members, even as we get these areas, please commit a number of these resources to ensuring that we support our education sector. A nation that is not educating its children is not a nation and has no future. Let us also play our role as members of parliament because we have a role under NGCDF to guide our NGCDF committees. I know members of parliament have no role in CDF, but you have a guiding role and an oversight role. Guide your NGCDF committees to allocate resources, even part of these areas, to sort out the issues of providing infrastructure for the junior secondary and CBC program so that none of our children go without accessing education, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, in this budget, when we say that this government, Honorable Speaker, will embark on what the Honorable Babu Owino was afraid to mention, but spoke in a very glorious manner about the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. And indeed, the issue he was talking about of demand and supply <laughs> No, he clearly understands what he was talking about. <laughs> the only thing he never understood is that what he was describing is a bottom-up economic transformational agenda under Kenya Kwanza. Yeah. And under this uh, bottom-up economic transformational agenda, Honorable Speaker, in this budget, you remember His Excellency the President committed that where the Jubilee government faltered on some of the programs under the Big Four agenda, on the program of housing, we shall not falter. And it will not just be talk. And Honorable Speaker, when I was the chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, progressively in every report I tabled in this house, I indicated that there were no resources that were being committed to the Big Four agenda. And we warned the Jubilee administration then, including our former president. In person, I remember telling him, every other budget that appears, there are no resources being committed to the Big Four agenda. This regime, I'm happy, is not just about talk, it's about action. That we have not only spoken about the housing agenda, but in this first supplementary budget, a figure of 1.5 billion, and I'm aware, if you look through the request by the chairman of the housing committee who is here, the Honorable Geno, he had wanted 8 billion shillings. But I'm glad that the committee, the budget and the provision committee, was able to spare 1.5 billion shillings to ensure that in all our 290 constituencies, we have seed capital for affordable housing, Honorable Speaker. And I want to encourage members of parliament to identify public land in your constituencies where housing, affordable housing can be done with this seed capital coming in. This will spur economic activities, as the Honorable Babu Amino was talking about, create jobs for millions of our youth, and create that ripple effect in our own economies down at the grassroots. When you build a hundred housing units in Kikuyu constituency or in Karachonyo constituency, Honorable Speaker, 
the level of youth that you will employ in that constituency will not be less than 2,000 youth getting direct employment. The indirect and ripple effect of uh, these economic activities out of this housing agenda, Honorable Speaker, will be momentous. And that's why I say it is not just about talk. Honorable Speaker, we cannot pass a supplementary budget at this time and not address the question of the drought situation in our country, which, Honorable Speaker, we have been told and have indicated is the worst situation you can add. I'll give you two minutes to conclude. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I was speaking about the drought situation, and if you go through the, the figures, Honorable Speaker, another five billion shillings is going towards drought mitigation uh, uh, programs in various ministries, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there also the issue of the insecurity situation in the North, North Rift, Honorable Speaker. And you see a lot of money, at least a figure of 300, uh, 200 million towards police operations and security operations to restore peace and uh, restore sanity in the North Rift and parts of Samburu, Honorable Speaker, where there are issues. There are also the issue of critical road interventions in constituencies that is there and another 1.3 billion shillings that is going towards construction of said sheds at EPZA as an economic niche for the Hasla economy, Honorable Speaker, to ensure that we create job opportunities. Honorable Speaker, let me not belabor so many things in terms of the actual figures that have been provided for under this supplementary, but say, Honorable Speaker, that the Article 223 payments, as I indicated, when the time comes, all this evidence shall be adduced before the relevant committees. And I want to challenge the Honorable John Buddy, the chairpersons of public investments committees, to get to the bottom of all these Article 223 payments. Because, as I said last week, if you don't, nothing will stop the current government from perpetuating the same uh, uh, habit of abuse of Article 223 and blatant loot of public resources on the verge of every election. Honorable Speaker, with those very many remarks, I beg to support and ask the House to support this supplementary budget report and the appropriations bill. And also just to mention, Honorable Speaker, that this is just the first stage uh, for the benefit of those of us who are new in the House. This process will be completed with the passage of the appropriation bill as at when we pass this report. And therefore, seek your indulgence and your your patience to the conclusion of this debate and even hopefully tomorrow or the day after to handle the appropriations bill to allow these resources now that have been committed to go to the MDAs for spending and for that spending to spur the economic activities that we envision for this country. With those many remarks, thank you, Honorable Speaker. The Honorable Milemba um, Mboko. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I came very early because of this, but I have reason to speak after great economists have spoken, including Bob Owino, who has since left, and who has deeply taken us to the Keynesian theory, and he made me, Honorable Speaker, enjoy my times when I taught the A-level economics about Keynesian himself. And uh, Keynesian really believed that government interventions can change the economic situation of a country, especially during a depression. And he advocated for what was called aggregate demand and developed what was called the multiplier effect. Today, I see people sometimes criticize the Hustler Fund. But the Hustler Fund, if you move with the Keynesian thinking, would create the aggregate demand and then pull an economy that is suffering in a form of depression. But that's not what I wanted to do, Honorable Speaker. I wanted to, one, thank the Chair of the Budget Committee for being very eloquent and having uh, his touch on this particular budget. Chair, you did